What is certain is that photography is related to death and the past. Because the moment you take a photograph of something, three minutes later it's something that no longer exists. Which also means every time you try to preserve something, you kill it. It's the same as putting something behind glass in a museum. It's the image of the object, but it's not the object itself. So in fact, photography saves. Saves and kills at the same time. Saves and, in the end, evokes the idea of something that no longer exists. A few years ago, I did this piece entitled Menschlich, meaning human. But because I did it in Germany, it's called Menschlich. It's a very big piece because it consists of 1,200 photographs, all faces. And they're faces I had already used in previous works and which come from very different sources. You've got uh, Spanish criminals, which I found in a paper called El Caso. And at the same time, a lot of criminals and victims from 1960s issues of Detective magazine. Members of the Mickey Mouse Club. French and German photo albums and quite a few Nazi photo albums I found in Berlin. Photographs of pupils from Jewish schools in the pre-war years. Photographs of dead Swiss people, ordinary dead Swiss people. Because I had a lot of these photos at home, over 6,000. They died afterwards. I mean, they were living Swiss people. And I chose the Swiss because there's no historical reason why they should die. They are the embodiment of happiness and neutrality. Nevertheless, they died. And so they seemed more universal for me, and I couldn't have done the same piece with dead Jews or even dead Germans, whereas the Swiss can represent everyone. What surprised me was how, in the end, they all look alike. They've all got the same face, and anyone looking at them can see a brother or an uncle or a sister. This is to say that when you've got 1,500 faces from a given society, it's a collective portrait in which everyone can see himself, and in which, of course, both the good and the bad look all alike, and perhaps are the same. And what also interested me when I did this piece was that there was a certain cemetery-like calm. I mean that we no longer know anything about these people. All these people are dead, but we no longer know anything about them. And the only thing we can say is that they were human. But it's impossible to say who was happy and who wasn't. It's a notion of vanity. They've all become equal. And I think that photographs of people have this terrible quality. They say this person existed, but they tell us nothing about them. We just know that they were someone. So all these images, all these people, Spanish criminals as much as dead Swiss, have been with me all my life. I know a little, but not very much about them. I mean, I know who is who, but for the visitor, they're all the same. There's a sort of absence of identity. And what I've always found more or less interesting is the contrast between the fact that each person is unique and that each person is so quickly forgotten. It's because someone is really someone. And for a long time I tried to preserve what I call intimate memory. 
This means that someone is someone because he knows, for example, where to buy a good quiche in Paris. He knows two or three jokes. He knew what love was and he could talk about it. And then all this, which makes up a person, very quickly, completely vanishes. From the very beginning, when I started working with photo albums, it became clear to me that photo albums are common to everyone, in our society at least, and they are nearly always interchangeable. And in fact, photography, especially amateur photography, does not try to depict a reality, but obeys a kind of code. I mean, it's something everyone already knows. Everyone knows what can be shown. And the subjects are all more or less the same. Going away on holidays, the beach, the birthday party, the baby's born. And so these are types of moments which anyone can identify with and which are already in the mind's eye even before the photograph is taken. And so, in fact, we are not capturing reality, we are producing clichés, to use the French term. I often try to blur these images so people can identify with them more easily. I mean, I erase people's features a little, just so that people can recognize themselves or someone else, someone they know. The eternal problem is that I have always used groups of images, groups of people, because I have real trouble choosing I mean, why should I choose this face rather than this one? So I have trouble isolating an image. Why this one? Why make this choice? If you've got 500 faces, the question of choice isn't quite as important. It's a category. The images I found at a flea market in Berlin are from photo albums from the 1940s. What moved me, what interested me, was that they were photographs like you would find in any photo album, where you see a father with a baby, the Christmas party, that sort of thing. And there's a sort of contrast between this sort of good life, this life which is so normal, and what we all know was going on at the time. I mean that you can kill a child in the morning and kiss your own in the afternoon. If a Nazi were so easy to recognize, so ferocious, it wouldn't be quite as dangerous. But they are us. They're our neighbors, normal people who can sometimes do terrible things. Horrible. Someone said, you die twice. You die when you die, and you die a second time when someone picks up your photo and no one knows who you are. And it's very strange how we remember a face in a photograph better than a real face. I mean, that when someone dies, we remember the photograph of that person, but not the person. So I've always been interested in imagining what the image will be, what will be the image that remains. The photographic image replaces the face. And at the same time, everyone is irreplaceable. And at the same time, everyone is actually replaced. Not replaceable, but replaced.
One of the few and last occasions I actually took photographs was during my five-year stint as a school photographer in Voiron, a small village in the centre of France. Near this village, there was an old chateau which had a contemporary art collection. Every year, I took photos there of the children, and the photos were sold to the parents for a small sum. I mean, for the price of a class photo. And I ran an extra set of prints for display in the chateau. And because I'm a bad photographer, I had real trouble taking these photographs. Once or twice, I even had to go back there, get the children to come back, because I'd put my hand in front of the lens, I'd forgotten to set the flash. And what I found interesting about the photos parents bought was that they had a practical value. They could be sent to grandparents to say, the little one has grown. And these same photos, when they were in the chateau, had an exemplary value. So they were artworks, if I may say so. So when they lose their practical value, they become exemplary.